So, hey, everyone, my name is Adam. Um, I work in Red Hat as a software engineer. Um, I work in Fedora most of my time and on the build system and all sorts of things like that. Um, Scott? Yeah, I am a product manager, so I focus a lot on the why and like what we're trying to do. Um, and I try to keep my fingers out of the what and how, or the what, how I should say, but I end up doing it too much. And so that's how I end up, I end up with talks like this with Adam. Um, so we'll go through kind of the why, the what, and the how in this talk on like building smaller container images. I think we can jump in. So <clears throat> I, we, we're going to go through a little section where we, where we kind of like dive through like over the last like seven ish years, you know, I've been talking to users at conferences and customers and all kinds of use, you know, people that basically use containers and like the, one of the, one of the resounding sort of like themes is always like, I want smaller images. Why are these images too large? How do I make these images smaller? And so obviously like over that time, we've, we've, we've looked at all kinds of like ways that we can make them smaller, but in the last like 18 ish months, especially working with Adam, we've definitely finally, I think we're onto some really, really interesting like techniques and ways to make container images smaller while still retaining all of the, uh, all of the advantages of using a Linux distro. And so we, this is where we get serious. This is where we're going to dig into serious business. So first um, I'll walk through like some of the, the things that I see people ask for, like they always ask for smaller images, but like what they really mean, what they really think they mean is, the, is that they want a smaller attack surface. Um, and by attack surface, if you haven't heard that word, what that means is, is, you know, the less permutations of software that you have in your environment get to find a bug and get into your environment. So, so if you have like 22 different versions of glibc and a hundred different versions of OpenSSL and, you know, 50 different versions of Nginx and 200 different versions of Apache, that's much more likely that like one of those versions of those, you know, 500 different pieces of software is going to have a bug that will let somebody get in. So like if you only have one OpenSSL and one uh, Apache and one Nginx and one glibc, it's much less likely and it's much easier to track the CVEs for, you know, for those, for that software. So like the attack concept of attack surface is that within an environment, within a software environment that's controlled by a specific organization, um, you know, the, the, the minimum number of different permutations of piece of software, what that's what they actually want, but they just say they want smaller container images. Um, because they're thinking about attack surface within the context of a single application or a single container, but that's not actually the way it works. It actually applies to everything in the environment, not just like a single container image. So they say smaller container image, but like I mentioned, you a thousand different container images that are like five megabytes each is actually five gigabytes of attack surface, where in that case, it might have actually been better to have like... Um, you know, 200 containers, you know, that are, that are, that are much bigger, that are like, you know, 15 megabytes each, right. Or what, whatever. But like, there's this balancing act of like less container images that could be slightly bigger versus a bunch of very small container images. It's not quite as black and white as everybody thinks to get to the actual less attack service, like smaller individual container images is part of the battle, but not all of it. Um, and then another thing I think that users want is they don't want to have to think about it, right? Like they just want, like, like there's this concept now of like consumerism that just, you know, I just want to be able to download this thing and use it. Um, and then I think finally, we jokingly said, you know, they want cool tweets. They just want to like tweet out like some of my more popular tweets are like when I show some of Adam's work or some of our work on, on, on what we call UBI micro or on, on Fedora or on using this sort of technique. Um, if I can produce really small images and tweet those out, that's pretty cool. So I think that's what users want in a nutshell. Um, and so to try to solve those things, like we looked at, we've looked at like over the last couple of years working together, like we've looked at a bunch of different things. Like, so my journey on looking at smaller images started probably seven years ago, but like some of the, many of these are dead ends by themselves in and of themselves. Um, so we looked at scratch builds. Um, we looked at minimizing the dependency tree within like Fedora and RHEL. We looked at distro list, which is, is really like the concept of using binaries that somebody else provides to you in a container image, although I'll dig into that a little bit deeper. And then uh, we looked at compiling from scratch, um, which is something that we've done in Linux forever, you know, like Apache, you know, a compiling Apache from scratch, for example. And then we also looked at the concept of, again, like less container 
which I'll dig in a little bit deeper. So next slide, Adam, if you don't mind. So the first thing is Scratch container image builds, right? Like, so we thought about the concept of like using yum to install into a Scratch directory and then copy that into like, you know, into the container. So like using like multi-stage builds along with, um, along with, you know, building building basically from scratch with like nothing in a, in a directory to start. The problem with this is, is you're basically competing against like the Fedora contributors or the rel builders, you know, the rel package builders or, or Debian or whoever, you know, whatever Linux distro. Um, and they're pretty good at it. Like these are not dumb people. Like they're pretty smart and they're pretty good at it. So like, you're not, what I found myself is I is better than them. And I went down and I started trying to build them from scratch and I realized, Oh, these are like the exact same size as the ones that are coming out of Fedora and, and Ubuntu and Rel and blah blah blah. So like I was like, all right. So this is not, this is not a magic bullet in and of itself to do scratch builds, right? Because because what happens is it's a dependency tree. Um, you know, there's a dependency tree, and certain dependencies get pulled in, and it is what it is. And like those dependency tree dependencies get pulled in, no matter whether it's somebody at Fedora at the Fedora project doing it, or at, or a Rel package manager, or if it's me. So like it ends up pretty much being washed by itself. So this was kind of a dead end. The, the next thing we tried, we, I looked at immediately was like, well, how do I minimize these dependencies? So in this graphic, this is a graphic that actually one of Adam's tools produces. Um, and, and it's pretty cool because it will kind of give you leads. Like, like if you're an investigator trying to figure out like, how do I figure out what's getting pulled in that's so big that's making this image get bigger, right? And so it's really nice. But then what I realized is like, oh, I wanna, I wanna change the dependency tree here that actually gets really hard. Like you have to be like, like I got the bright idea one day to try to look at the Apache spec file in Fedora. And I was like, ah, I'll just fix this. I was a sysadmin forever. I've done enough spec files. And I realized, oh my God, the Apache spec file is one of the most sophisticated spec files I've ever seen. And then trying to minimize, like turn certain dependencies to weak dependencies and do all that myself, I quickly realized was like a lot of SME knowledge, like a lot of subject matter expertise um, that I didn't even know I didn't have. Like, like when I compiled Apache from scratch, I just pulled in whatever dependencies and it just worked. And I did, but I realized I didn't have an actual strong grasp on the actual dependency tree. Like it's a very different level of knowledge about a certain package. Um, and it's even different than what maybe the developers of Apache or the users of Apache actually know. So like the packaging skill set is definitely its own thing. So this again, kind of ended up being a dead end for me by itself. Um, finally, I looked at distro list and uh, I, I figured it was easier for me to let Cletus Hikes, a.k.a. Tanner guy uh, of world renowned fame and, and with a very, very popular tweet uh, where he explains what distro list is. You know, there's no such thing as distro list, just another dependency that you manage. And so, you know, jokingly, I mean, this is obviously a joke, but uh, um, but but in a nutshell, like if you look at like dis the distro list. Uh, like there's one, there's a, I forget exactly what the community name is, but I think it's something distro list on GitHub. It's a Google project. Um, if you look at that, like half, some of the, some of the software that you're trying to download is compiled from scratch and is like its own thing. And so you're expecting that community to manage those binaries for you and all the libraries that those binaries are compiled against. And then others are actually just using Debian packages. So like what I quickly realized was like, there's no such thing as distro list. Like you either manage the dependency or some other team manages the dependency, but somebody's managing the dependency and you're either managing it from scratch or you're managing it as part of a set of escrowed binaries. And by escrowed binaries, I mean like binaries that some other team builds and saves somewhere, right? Like, um, you know, that's, that's basically the, con and I quickly realized that is a Linux distro. Like you can call it distro list, but it's still a Linux distro. Like you're, you're essentially offloading that subject matter expertise to another group of people to go do that for you. And I found some challenges with that in that like a distro list group, you know, is not necessarily have the same track record as like Fedora. Like Fedora has been managing dependencies for 15 years, you know, 15, 20 years. So you know that they, they there's like organizational knowledge of how to manage an escrow binaries. And that's what they do for a Linux distro that runs on bare metal. So like, it's not really that different for inside of a container image. So again, distro list by itself, it it feels like a red herring. So finally, as I mentioned, you can you can have somebody escrow those binaries from scratch, you know, for you, or you can build them yourselves and escrow them yourselves. Um, now you you have the option you could compile from scratch every time you do a container image build, but that would be terrible because that would take forever. Or you know, and you could cache them on your build servers. Or again, you could escrow them on some server somewhere, and now you just became a.
feel like it's been not super fun. Like this quickly, this was probably the quickest dead end um, where I'm like, eh, I don't really want to do this because now, now I'm in the business of building X distro and in the business of building container images from scratch. And now I'm two steps away from what I actually want to achieve, which is just have a small image. I just want a Podman poll or a, or a Kubernetes, you know, YAML file that pulls an image. I don't want to, I don't want to have to like do all this work myself. So this is where like, like, like the final one we looked at was like, well, what a printing environment, right? Like, like config management world, we, we very easily understood that like having one Linux distro to manage was much easier than 22 different Linux distros because there's always these small differences between them. And even though the config management tool helps you, it's still easier to minimize the number of Linux distros. For some reason, once we moved to containers, we dump everything in a tarball and we were just like, we, we like, we don't care what's in there. And we're like, it's fine. But then you realize, but from a pure attack, uh, you know, surface perspective, like I just gave a, a very general example here. I just picked random, you know, or, or relatively recent versions of Fedora, Ubuntu, Alpine and UBI. And I, I added up the different versions. You know, you'd end up with 11 different versions of OpenSSL, three different versions of Muscle C library, and eight different versions of glibc. So you basically have 11 different C libraries and 11 different OpenSSLs. And you go, what what value do I get from that, right? Like, that's actually way, way, way more than an attack surface that if I just standardize on like one, in this example, I just use UBI 8, but this works with, with any Linux distro. If you just standardize one version of one Linux distro, you end up with a lot less uh, you know, a lot less attack service because you end up with one glibc, one C library, one OpenSSL library. And I use those because those are two really key important libraries to think about when you're thinking about containers. Um, and so finally, when we pull all this together, um, <clears throat> we we looked at this and we realized like none of these by themselves is a completely magic bullet, but when you pull it all together, there is something magical. And so like a lot of Adam's work is going to cover basically like using a high quality dependency tree. Like I still think, uh, the Linux distro still matters. So like I, I did a talk at FOSDEM last year, like the Linux distro still matters because they're really good at managing dependencies and escrowing binaries. So like that seems dumb not to use that. Um, the existing tooling, the tooling that they build also still works really well and they're really good at managing dependency trees and pulling that. Um, uh, now minimizing the dependencies, this is actually a place where Adam's gonna go a lot deeper because he's done a lot of work and people don't quite realize how hard this work is because there is actually no single expert within a Linux distro that knows how to minimize it. It's actually, it's actually you know, hundreds and thousands of people working together, each building their packages. And so like, it really has to be a collaborative team effort to like do this. And so, so like Adam will dig deeper into that. It took a lot of work to get us on the right track there. Um, Again, choosing a single Linux distribution, obviously we're doing this within Fedora and RHEL ecosystem because it's what it's where we work. But like any single Linux distribution could do this, but but we're gonna talk about ours in particular. Um, and then finally, after you have all of that, the output, the effect of it is like that you will have smaller images. And then those smaller images will share the exact same libraries with all of the other small images in your environment. And now you've truly achieved what you want. You want a smaller attack surface. So I'm gonna hand it over to Adam to dig deeper into a lot of what he's done over the last 18 months. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, let's talk about building small image, showing some examples, how you can do that, because I expect, because you're here, you, I expect you want to build stuff yourself. So I want to demonstrate a few things, how you can actually do that with a Linux distro. Um, so I'll be using Fedora as an example, because that's where innovation happens, but like everything I show will work in basically any RPM distro that uses, that uses DNF. Um, which is a package manager. Um, I'll be using the concept of multi-stage build, multi-stage container builds. And the main idea is basically like when you buy a car, right? You only get the car and they won't ship you the assembly line with it. That would be, that would be horrible. Um, so if I think about this concept and package managers, I can do the same thing, right? Um, the package manager is to build a container image, but I don't want to ship it because that's, that's no use in the end. And Fedora's package manager is DNF and yes, a few features that can help us actually achieve this. Um, you can install into an empty directory, so you don't have to install into your system, but actually somewhere else. Um, you can disable weak dependencies. So in the RPM world, there's many dependencies and some of them are higher, some of them are weak and weak means that they are kind of optional, right? So you can disable all of the optionals and then 
intentionally pick what you actually need that reduces the size um, and you can disable documentation packages because you don't need those in containers those need to be very small um, combining that with some knowledge about the actual ecosystem for example we have alternatives because it's a huge huge um, group of packages and there's just a few of them that just might provide the same functionality and there might be a huge difference in terms of size or other things. Um, there are two in particular I'll be using as an example, and these are GLIPC minimal length pack and core util single. I'll show them in a bit. So let's try to build a Docker file. Um, I'm using a Docker file because that's very widely known format how to build a containers. This will work in any other format that you're using with Podman with Builder. I'm using this because most people know it, but the concept is the same everywhere. So let's try an example Nginx. You probably don't need to build Nginx container yourself, like you can get them from Red Hat or Fedora, but this is an example of how you can build an Nginx, right? You might think that this is the best way. You just do from Fedora 33, run the package manager, install Nginx, and you end up with 224 megs image, which is not amazing. So how we can make it slightly smaller. So I'll try using the scratch build that Scott said, right? So oh, th this is the multi-stage build in, in the container. So I'll say, hey, I'll build, I'll install everything into a directory and then build a new image just from that directory. So there's no package manager in the end. But something really weird happened. It just grew to 450 megs. Why? This is really weird, right? So what if I apply some other knowledge that I shared? Um, I can disable weak dependencies, I can disable documentation, but what makes the biggest difference is actually choosing some of the alternative packages in the dependency tree. And these are glibc, minimal length pack, and core util single. These are just smaller versions of, of those packages and it suddenly dropped to 116 meg. So these, these are the two side by side. And you can see how with a few tricks, you can actually build an image that's reasonably small with still using the Linux distro. So this is using packages that are maintained by hundreds of experts. Um, it's always complete, right? You can always install it. Um, it works, it's maintained. If, if there's an issue, you can open a bug, they'll fix it for you. This is what distro does. And if you need an update, you just rebuild the image as you would normally do, of course. Um, you want your images to be immutable, so that's how you get updates in. And that's how you can do much, much smaller results. I have a few other examples you can do. I call it distro, as this is probably a bad name, but you can build a small base which only has a glibc and bash in it, and that's 38 megs, and this is how you how you get there. And you can use it as like a general environment or just put some Golang or REST binary in there to run it. Um, there's no package manager in there. And if you want to get even smaller, you can build a 1.8 meg um, distro less, in quotes, busy box base. That's just 1.8 megs. Again, from Fedora, from an RPM, but there's no package manager in the, in the result. So you, you can just copy this out from the slide. We'll show them later and you can build yourself a tiny image. Um, so these were just a few examples how you can actually use distributions to build a small image, but don't include the package manager. And this is possible by actually minimizing the dependency tree, right? That's why we're able to build a few, that's why we're able to build smaller images. And I wanna share a few facts about that. Um, so Scott mentioned this, right? Dependencies are complex and this is the Fedora repo. And it's like a dependency graph with all the nodes, packages, and many various dependencies in between them. And you can't really just approach it as an, as an individual and try to make it smaller, right? This is really complex and hundreds of really clever people maintain these individual pieces. So you need something broader to actually optimize this. So that's where Fedora's objectives come in. And minimization is actually one of Fedora's main objective. So the whole community is actually working towards m minimizing the dependencies so we can build smaller images. And this is a graph of 
Fedora base image sizes. Basically, you can maybe see on the right side that the colors change. I've been building this graph over time, but around Fedora 30, I have two entries here. This is where we started the minimization objective. And that's where the image sizes started to drop quite significantly. And this is again, only possible with many, many people working together and making sure that the dependency tree is, organ uh, is optimized and also that the image is using only what it needs. Um, and for that, we have a tool. Um, this is actually available for you in public. You can just see it. And I want to share a few things it can do. Um, this is looking at Nginx, which is a web server. It's what we built before. And this is analyzing it in various base container images and in, on various architectures. And these are not necessarily images that Fedora builds or ships. This is mostly just installations that we expect people to do on them on, on their own. So we want to make sure that these are as small as possible. So we analyze all of this and this is what like all the Fedora teams are, this is all available to all of them to just monitor whatever they need. And you can see at the bottom right, um, this is the, this is the Nginx image that we built. Um, and yeah, there's dependency graphs that you can see over time. There was some weirdness in the middle, but overall, not growing um, package list with details about each package. And even you can drill down to the inter like dependencies in between individual packages. And I can really show you things um, in detail. And this is available on this URL. You can go there right now and you can just check it out. And you can even contribute your own weekly workloads to put them into the monitoring. Um, so that's my part, I guess I'll hand it to Scott. Yeah, so maybe next slide. All right. So some of this work, like you can see it today in, in Fedora, obviously, as Adam showed, like, like, and we mess with this all day, you know, or all, all the time in Fedora, but also you'll see this work arrive in RHEL, uh, some in RHEL 8, some in RHEL 9, mostly is kind of where you'll see it. I mean, we're, we're kind of done with RHEL 7, but, but I wanted to at least put out there that like again these these are like uh, a pretty decent base image that's standard that like where you're going to see a lot of this work arrive so like we have something called ubi micro um coming in rel 84 which shouldn't be in the next three-ish months um and so you'll see like we did get it down to about 38 megabytes uh uncompressed and i believe compressed it might be 13 ish megabytes so like it's pretty darn good across the wire like 13 megabytes and then 38 and that's with a full that's with a real glibc um, we are looking at um, other ways to minimize the dependency tree. Like, like um, I'm working with Carlos O'Donnell to like look at ways that we might trim out a megabyte or two here and there for like TZ data and um, and other other like components of glibc. So there's still we had, we definitely have a roadmap of things where we can like continue to focus on driving down the dependencies. But like you quickly find that like it, it touches a lot of different teams and a lot of different clever people, like Adam said. And so it's, 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 it's a tough problem, but it's one that's fun to work on. Um, again, like we said, kind of distro list images, like, like, again, these are, this is a, a joking word that we use because like in the image, it doesn't have the assembly line packaged or, or maybe another way to say it is like, we package the assembly line in a build container in the first stage of the build. And then we only deliver the the car in the second one, right? And so, so like, if you need to move the assembly line around, you can, um, you could, well, you could save that assembly line and cache it and keep it around, and then know exactly how to rebuild that image. Um, but, but in general, you at, in production, you only want the, uh, you know, the car, and that makes sense. And uh, again, it's not necessarily distro -less, like serverless and all these other less words it's somebody else's you know somebody else has to manage that and in this case we think that let, letting fedora and the, the the linux distro itself manage that makes sense um i already kind of mentioned like the dependency tree rel 8 rel 9 you're going to see a lot of this i mean i'm hoping to see even smaller in rel 9 like when we have a rel 9 micro you know uh i hope to even get it down in the 25 ish megabyte range we'll see how close we can get to that but getting to that and then maybe even looking at um a a uh a uh like maybe even a busy box image just by itself as like a base starting point um definitely some other ones that keep your eye out for like probably rel eight five ish time frame 
is around uh, having like an open SSL based image and an uh, Nginx based micro image and an Apache based micro image. Those are three that are high on my priority list. Like I'd really like to get those three out by like rel eight five timeframe. Um, and so those would end up being then in that 120 megabyte range for like Apache and Nginx. And I think even smaller 80 ish megabytes. I can't quite remember the size off the top of my head for open SSL, but they should be pretty good even with the rel eight dependency tree but then with again with the rel 9 dependency tree which will inherit a lot of uh, adam's work you'll end up seeing a lot even smaller images but uh and so then you know i i bring this all together to like try to explain like this is how you actually get to a smaller tax surface right like you have to have standardized uh c libraries standardized open sl standardized uh you know xml libraries things like that like have all of these standardized and then and then have the minimum you know, each of the Im images needs to be minimized, but then the entire dependency chain, your tree has to be also minimized so that like the attack surface within your organization is actually minimized. And so this is kind of the path we're going down and like, we think it's a pretty good path and uh, happy to answer any questions if you guys have any. Okay. Uh, Adam Kaplan was asking, does minimizing depend the then dependencies go hand in hand with the objective of reproducible builds? to keep the auto factory metaphor going, can these techniques help ensure we are building the same car? Yes, absolutely. So this was one of the core principles behind the minimization objective. Like um, there were options, right? We can just install something and then just tear things apart and make it small, but terrible and not reproducible. So um, the decision was that we actually want to keep using RPM dependencies as they are unmodified, right? So we're doing changes before actually the installation. So this is during the packaging and during during the build process. So still just RPM tree and it's still reproducible. Like the way we build packages in Fedora are in, in a build system that just keeps track of all everything that was in the build route at any particular time. And you can really reproduce like to the bit every single build and that's what definitely we're keeping um and so yeah the answer is definitely yes that's that that's very important to us okay next question from cornell what do you think about nix and building nix oci images while overriding certain package attributes for example disabling pam support the git package does it count as making your own distro That's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I don't, I'm not super familiar with Nix. Um, so I don't have a good answer to that off the top of my head. How, yes, Adam. Yeah, sorry. No, not, not, not really expert in Nix there. Um, yeah, I guess it's a strange question for us because we basically deal mostly with like Fedora and Rel. And in the Fedora and Rel world, we would probably never disable things like Pam. Like we want, we want to keep the way the binaries function in a container. Since containers are just fancy processes and container images are just fancy files that live on the operate, you know, on the disk, then we basically want to keep them functioning quite similarly to to the way they function in a native traditional Linux OS. And so, like, we really try to steer away from, like, I get the, I start to squint my eyes and go, eh, I don't know about anything that would, like, make the binaries behave differently in a container. We already have enough confusion. And, and you'd be surprised how many questions we get. The vast, vast majority of the questions I get are trying to take something that exists in Linux and then make it work in a container. I'd say that's 85% of the questions I get. And so, like, making things work differently kind of defeats that. So, I, I think, I don't think that's a technique we would look at deeply. Mm -hmm. And also, like, we're using glibc, the standard C library, and it's kind of big, but, like, that's the standard that, that everyone uses, right? And that, that's what we want to use as well. So there's there's additional ways how you can optimize it, like, for example, use it with the busy box, but that's not what we're really aiming for. We want to use the standard ways, but minimize within those. Okay, let's go to the next question. Is UBI now is out? No, UBI 9 will be based on RHEL 9. And so when RHEL 9 drops, we'll release UBI 9 at the same time. Um, the closest thing that you can see Fedora, Fedora, if you go and play with the Fedora images, you're going to get very close to what, what you'll have in RHEL 9. Okay, and questions from Rene. What was the improvement from, from performance perspective of minimizing site as showed for NGINs? 
are there any performance metrics? So that's one. That's one. I'll jump in, Adam, if you don't mind, because I have right. I've had some recent conversations around this that are interesting. So minimizing the dependency tree and all of these things will not really have an effect on performance. The the two main places that will affect performance, in my opinion, are glibc and the kernel, are and probably OpenSSL library. Um, you know, those those three things are what matter. And and actually, I just got a recent report of somebody using a a, a partner using. Uh, in fact, I still have a I have a call with them next week, I believe, if I if I remember right, because they want to understand why their database is performing better on UBI than than other Linux base images. And this is you you can break this question down and say, well, why does why does Nginx or why does you know a database perform better with this library than that library with these binaries and those binaries? I mean, that's always going to come down to the kernel, glibc, and then the libraries, right? And so like. I, over this journey that I've come from the container side, learning more and more about glibc and like all the work we do in that in that tool chain, I realized that that team does an immense amount of work to make the glibc that like Red Hat produces in Fedora and in RHEL and even just glibc in general, even upstream, like they do a tremendous amount of work to like make that work really quickly. And they worry about runtime performance. The the minimization would only ever have to do with the pull time of pulling the container image, but the runtime performance is all the work of the glibc team and then the kernel team and then how that stuff's compiled and how it works. And so apparently there are customers and and, and users that are seeing different performances based on which uh, which library. I I did I did research muscle C a while back. Again, I did we didn't do like crazy benchmarking, but it definitely looks like there are system calls that are significantly slower in like other if you know, engineering is always a trade-off, right? Like the, the, there's a reason why glibc is bigger. It has more functionality and it's probably been better tested and blah, blah, blah. If you go to a small library like Muscle C, there's definitely function calls or, or system calls that don't, func that don't perform as well. I suspect that's, that's where I would focus your time if you're worried about Nginx actual runtime performances, the, the kernel, the C library, and, and like the SSL libraries, things like that. Next question from Camille. Have you considered also using libcurl minimal and curl minimal as alternatives to libcurl and curl in the base images? Yeah, sure. I, I think that's basically with whatever I show with the glibc minimal and there's minimal versions of other packages. And yeah, that you can definitely use those. This goes back to like knowing the knowing the ecosystem and knowing like what to pick because there's alternatives. Um I, I I kind of I, I kind of want want to have maybe a list or something a way to make this more obvious for people so like they don't need to just know but they can refer it something but yeah this is definitely part of it just making the smart choice tree that work the best for for whatever you're doing and back to the performance um you you, you might also want to consider just like sometimes smaller might be maybe not that performant. So these are always trade-offs, right? But yeah, if you want to optimize for size, just like go for all the minimal packages and you get very small image. Yeah. And, and to jump in on that, the one about the uh, uh, lib minimal, that's interesting. Like on the discord server, I'd love to discuss, like, would you view it useful to have like a, a curl container image or a wget container image that's something i'd love to discuss a little bit deeper like that's where my mind goes like it might be easiest for us to produce a container image that already has those minimal versions in them so i'd love to discuss that a little long more if you have some time okay question from pavel what do you use for scheduling and triggering the image builds drawn jenkins well adam could probably answer fedora and i could probably answer rel <laughs> Okay. Will there be a question from Teddy? Oh no, no, no. Oh, oh no, that, that wasn't the answer. I was, I was yeah. handing it to Adam to answer, like what you use in Fedora to build. All right, yeah, Fedora I think uses um, OSBS, which is O. Oh, uh, how would I just OpenShift build just, system? Oh, OpenShift, yeah, build, yeah, OpenShift container build system. Um, that that's what Fedora uses, and you can find like sources for all, all the container builds on SRC .fedora Pro. I think it's slash containers. Um, that's where you can find all the sources for the Fedora packages. Yeah, and the same is actually true for RHEL. Like internally, we have an OSPS system that basically is a huge cluster of of servers that are all running OpenShift, and then uh, that build system actually is what builds our container images. And there's this dependency tree graph. So like, if we rebuild UBI, we have to rebuild shared images. We have to rebuild all the middleware images, etc. 
there's a huge I, I think Red Hat might have one of the biggest build dependence. I don't know, but but it's pro, it's pretty big. We build millions of images per month. Okay, question. Next one is from Terry. Would it be a sent OS stream nine container image? <laughs> Terry, why are you asking me this? No, I'm kidding. I'm uh, if there were. Yes, there will likely be. Yes. Oh, go ahead, Adam. Were you going to say something? Oh, that no. I would just be very surprised if there wasn't. So, yeah. That's I guess. Yeah, there, in fact, in fact, Brian Simpson is working on a, a CentOS eight stream image right now. Um, it, as of today, we're building it off of UBI. We're basically using a, a UBI eight image and then running a yum update against the CentOS stream uh, thing, so that like basically UBI is the since since CentOS stream is a future version of RHEL, you can think of it almost like a rawhide. It makes sense to just like update the the slower moving, you know, you know, and like from you know, you can think of you can think of CentOS Stream as rel dot next, um, and then you can think of like UBI as rel. And so, when you want rel dot next, you just run a yum update, and just a few things should change, like you know, that are just a small set of packages. There's only like 180 packages in in UBI, so like if you run a yum update, you know, it might be five packages get updated. So like that's the way, that's the way the plan is to build the CentOS Stream images as of today. Okay, there was also a question from James regarding. Round nine, uh, when it's going to GA, but uh, Terry already replied um, that uh, it's in the middle of 2022. Correct? Yep, that's right. And the last question, the funny one from William Scott, can you remove your hat so we can see your new mane? I am I'm too bald to remove my hat, <laughs> but you can see my, my, you know, you can hear, I don't care. This is my hair. <laughs> <laughs> this is COVID hair. This is like, whatever, a year of no haircuts. I believe that you made our days like you know, it it bit it, it bit more colorful with uh, with this last um, picture of you, which we can uh, project. Um, that's all questions. We still have like two minutes to go. So if you have any question, it's the last moment to ask. I have no idea what I mean by pandemic hair. That makes no sense to me. <laughs> You've always had pan. I know. Thank you. That's all I believe. And I would like to thank you, Scott and Adam, for presenting the workshop. We had great questions. And there's one more from Pavel, um, what was the biggest issue when minimizing the dependencies? Um, I don't think, I, I know like the biggest issue, but it's just every, getting everyone on the same page and figuring out like what to do, because there's, if, if, you, if you say smaller, right? Like, what do you mean smaller? Like, do you want to minimize the repo? Do you want to minimize? And then there were like many things and we need to just discuss this and figure out like, what specifically we're actually making smaller versus like, what are we keeping, right? So we're keeping RPM, libc, but we wanna maybe make the dependency tree more optional and stuff like that. So, so those things and then, I don't know, it's, it's, there went like a huge problem. It's, it, it, it's an interesting work, definitely. Um, so just like, yeah, getting everyone on the same page and making sure like people actually find time and like on top of the actual, you know, jobs and everything to focus on this. Um, but yeah, I, I can think of like a, something really, really huge. I think it's going. Yeah, I'd concur, Adam. Like for me, it was just getting people excited about the idea of minimizing things. It's it's grunt work in a lot of ways, right? Like if, if I have 50 million things on my plate, somebody says, Hey, by the way, you need to make these things smaller. I'm like, ah, like I'm going to get grumpy. Like, and so getting everybody excited about like, no, this matters. Like, especially in the container world, that, that was probably in my mind, the hardest piece. Sorry. 
Yeah, and sometimes it actually means like making the packagers life harder because they may be using some huge library to make this piece of code simpler, right? To just like call a function. And when I'm asking you, hey, you need to remove this very useful library because it's massive, like that's actually a burden for them, but it benefits everyone else, right? And then we need to figure out like what to do about it. So there's definitely trade-offs. It's, it's mostly just trade-offs. <laughs>